Crappie Hippie presents At the Bench, an instructional video series on how to tie jigs and make your own fish catching baits. Brought to you by Glasswater Lead Free Lures. May all your fishing be lead free. Visit us at glasswaterleadfreelures.com. And now it's time to gain some know how with Crappie Hippie at the Bench. Hello and welcome everybody to Crappie Hippie at the Bench. Boy, it sure feels good to be in front of the camera. I think I've been gone for about two years now. If you wonder what I've been up to, well, I'm trying to form my own lead-free lure company. And if you want to hear about that, we'll have information on that at the end of the video. If you just can't wait, skip to right there and you can hear all about it. But most of you come here to build a pin jig or find out what a pin jig is, either because you're into lead-free fishing or you're just a tackle geek like me that likes to build and tie your own stuff. Either way, that's terrific. If you're here for both reasons, that's doubly terrific. Uh, we're going to just get started here right away. Now, if you're familiar with my other instructional video, I only have the one on how to tie glitter jigs. What I like to do is sit here and explain the tie and explain a few things about the bait. But if you're one of these people that just wants to get right into it and just build the bait without listening to me talk, I always put just a little silent demo set to music. Anyway, if you want to skip right to that, it's here. Otherwise, sit tight and we're going to learn how to tie a pin jig. Okay, so what do you need to tie pin jigs? Well, first of all, you need the same basic stuff that you need to tie any kind of jig. Uh, you need a vise. Uh, you need a thread, bobbin, uh, all that stuff. And if you want to find out more about the equipment you need to tie jigs, then please watch my other video, which is how to uh, set yourself up in jig tying for $60 or less. Uh, once you have your basics accomplished, what you need to tie a pin jig, obviously you need a pin, you need a jig hook, and you need some beads. Now see, pin jigs are not something I thought up. This was thought up in the Pacific Northwest a number of years ago by steelhead fishers that love to use jigs, and they wanted jigs with a real bright gold or bright shiny silver head on them. And they couldn't get what they wanted by painting them. So what they would do is take a brass bead, a polished brass bead, or a nickel plated brass bead, and they would use that bead for the jig head, and that would give them that bright metallic look that they were after. Um, anyway, I love that idea. I love that principle, and they're really great to tie up with the brass, but there's a cheaper material called hematite. Hematite is a type of iron, and it's been used to make jewelry beads for a long, long time. Um, it only became popular in the Western world in around, I think, the 1890s. Uh, but it's a process where beads are made for jewelry. And yeah, you think, oh, iron, it's going to rust. Well, what they do is they purify the iron somehow. Because if the iron is purified, then it doesn't nearly want to rust like, you know, iron, regular iron, a nail or what have you that has some impurities in it. Um, uh, you know, wrought iron, cast iron, that kind of stuff. So... Because, of course, you can't have jewelry that is going to rust and leave brown spots on someone's skin, or you can't have it on their clothes, and you sure as heck can't have someone buy a necklace and then go back to the jewelry box a year later and it's all rusted up. So, I don't know who figured this out, but they're really smart, and the top crossover between jewelry making and, and uh, lure making is sometimes is, is really, really uh, frequent. And here's an example. So, anyway, you can get these hematite beads in, they mainly come in a gunmetal color or titanium or whatever you want to call this color But you can get them in all different kinds of colors um, Look in here in my little jig box here and you can see that I've tied up some gold and purple I got some blue in there and then some regular hematite color uh, You can get these all different kinds of places. Of course It's not very smart economically, but you can tear apart a hematite necklace uh, You can also go to a bead shop and get them They're gonna run you between 10 and 50 cents a piece depending on what you get and where the shop is if you're not in a big town that has a bead shop, um, you can order them from a U.S. supplier. Uh, I'll have some links in the description below. If you want to get them really cheap, uh, you can order them straight from China. But remember, the shipping is going to add to your cost. And also, it takes quite a while to get them to get here from China. But that's where you can get the most variety, is ordering them straight from China, either from uh, Beads U.S. or Eight Seasons or some company like that. So whatever way you get them, Get yourself some hematite beads. Uh, I like to use 6 millimeter, 8 millimeter, 10 millimeter, and 12 millimeter in most of my ties. Uh, they correspond roughly to 32nd ounce, uh, 16th ounce, 8th ounce, and uh, just under a 3 16th ounce. Um, and once again, they kind of split hairs right there. I'm not going to get into all this different weights and stuff. Suffice to say, 
I tie a lot of 10 millimeter. I tie a lot of eight millimeter uh, because those are the two sizes I use the most. Also, all right, so the, you have the outside diameter, which you have to pay attention to. Also, you have to pay attention to how big the hole is. If the hole is too small, your pin won't go through it. And if it's too big, then your pin will pass all the way through it. So I look for beads that have at least a 0 0.8, 0 0.9 millimeter uh, hole in them. And I really don't want it any bigger than 1.5 millimeters, all right? Now, you can also, if you've got a bead and it's too big, the hole is too big for your pin, you can also turn around and use a nail, all right? So I've got some number 18 finish nails right here. And nails are fun to use because not only do they, uh, you can get a big nail head that won't go through that hole, but they weigh anywhere between half a gram to a gram a piece, and they'll add weight to your build, and if that's what you want. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to start off, we're going to build a little bitty pin jig, okay? And what you need is an, just a regular 90 degree jig hook, like this one. It's a number six, Eagle Claw 570, a very economical jig hook. Uh, you can go to Bass Pro and get these, and they'll run you anywhere depending on the size, between, you know, eight to, you know, 15 cents a piece. Um, you can order them from lureparts.com or Barlow's or Jan's Netcraft, and you get them from a, you know, that kind of a bulk purchase. You can get the price down to, you know, four to six cents, you know, somewhere in there, depending on the size. And then uh, if you really want to get a bunch and get them really cheap and get your friends together, well, get an account with Shorties or Captain Hooks or somebody and order, you know, several thousand of them. And then you're going to drop your price into, you know, two, three, four cents, you know, uh, really, really economical if you, you know, crazy about tying and want to tie a lot of them. Um, okay, so we got a nice, but whatever, it's just a basic 90 degree jig hook. And I'm making a nice little number six for bluegill and red ear fishing. And here we go. I'm going to put a number uh, six millimeter bead on this one. And so the first thing we do, is we get our pin, we get our jig. Uh, no, not the first thing is get the pin. First thing is do we get the hook and we straighten up our bobbin here. We get our thread all ready. And now I can't see nothing. Ouch, see me like that. Uh, I can't. Uh, all righty. Let's pause it right here. All right. See, I can't see anything without these glasses. Swimming. And now we can get started. Okay, so the first thing you do, it's like any jig tie. You want to come in here. And you want to lay down a bed of thread. And I am using a 210 denier flat nylon thread. And 210 denier is a very heavy thread for tying big streamers and jigs and big baits like that. Uh, denier is just a French word to tell you how strong the thread is. The bigger the number, the bigger the denier, the stronger the thread is. Um... You want your denier between 100 and 210 to tie uh, jigs. The guys I really admire most that tie a whole bunch of jigs all the time use between 140 and 160 denier. But I happened to get this 210 super cheap from uh, Grandpa Bob's uh, Jig Supply. And you can go to grandpabobs.com and he has great prices on stuff. It takes him a while to get you your stuff, but it's sure worth it in terms of the savings. So, and I like 210 so I can pull really hard and get my wraps down really well and it really holds this jig build together so i make my bed of thread and then i come in here and i take my i just take my little teeny beanie six millimeter bead and i put my pin in it now this is a number 14 beading pin and it's important you get a number 14 beading pin because number 17 dress pin is what you tend to find pretty much everywhere and the higher the number, the flimsier the pin is, so, or the finer it is, okay? Like a number 20 is a silk, is a pin for silk, and so on. Number 14 beading pin is a lot stronger. They're a little shorter, and there's exactly what you want to build pin jigs. Now, what you don't want is for that pin point to be going back past your hook point. And you can see that just a little bit long for me here. Because your body on your jig is only going to come back to your hook point. And you don't want any of the pins showing and sticking out. You don't want that. So, what you do is I'm going to take my wire cutters. And these are cheapies. I think I found these in the road. And I'm just going to knock off just a little bit of that pin. Now, be sure and put your pin and your whole setup down in the trash. Because you don't want this pin point going flying off and getting in. The cat's foot or your sister's foot or your mom's foot or your buddy's foot 
you just don't want them to have that kind of mess so be real careful to get that pin down in the trash can and we're gonna there we go just cut it off just like that make sure everything's nice and safe all righty all right so now we get up here and we look and it's oh it's just right it ends right there all righty so first thing we do is we're going to take a couple wraps around like this now you see see how some of the pin is sticking out beyond the 90 degree i'm going to go around that part and then around the 90 around that part right in the crawl of the 90 around back forth and i'm going to really tie that head right here by crisscrossing back and forth until i cover that all up because if you get this pin this jig stuck in a rock that's going to be the place that really gets the stress when you pull it out and this is one reason i like to use a heavier pin because it won't bend now i don't care what kind of cutters you're using like i said mine aren't the best but you're always going to have some burrs or some raggly uh, metal here on the end when you make a cut whether you use a pin or a nail you want to go real easy around that so you don't cut your thread but you want to cover it up completely like i'm doing here you want to give it a complete covering of thread and you want to make sure that pin is not visible anywhere and there you go you have it right there now what we're going to do to finish it up first we do what's called a half hitch which is a basic uh tying knot for fly tying and jig tying you just take your three fingers and see i'm just twisting the thread like that just over itself once that's it i just put it on here pull it tight just like that and then i'm going to roll this up and get it a little closer okay and now what i want to do is i want to seal this all up all right it's um, uh, it helps the jig last longer um it keeps that stain even though that's a stainless steel pin it still might rust if it gets a lot of water and mo moisture sits on it so we want to put some moisture proofing in there and what i like to use is loon hardhead because hardhead is a an environmentally friendly brand also hardhead is water soluble so if it gets thick on you all you have to do is put a few drops of water in it and stir it up shake it up uh don't go have to hunt up the acetone or the xylene or anything to thin it out uh, but you can use whatever you want you know you can put vinyl in here i like to put a little on the thread here like this first and just kind of wrap wrap it in like that um i like to use i use sally hansen's clear fingernail polish is a good one all right and now once we've got those wraps really down like that with some glue on them we're going to do the half hitch over and over again and that's what's called a whip finish so we go in here and we go around once see we just keep twisting it up like we're twisting a rubber band around again okay and everybody has their magic number here you know three four five seven i wouldn't go more than seven times well let's see i think that's five that's the number i like and then pull it tight try to keep everything right in the same spot now here's another way to do a finish that they do over in england and places in europe where you you bring it you crisscross it over just the same okay and i know this black thread's hard to see um and then you make your twist down here one two and three and then you make one hitch over the top like this and you cinch it right in and you're going to feel that's a little harder to pull down and that's going to give you a real sure finish to your build and then we just want to goop this whole thing okay and i'll tell you what i'm going to do and i'm just going to goop that like that and get it really 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 uh waterproofed and then i'm just going to take and what i like to do is break that thread because the thread uh, will get buried and it'll be pulled super super tight and now we have a beautiful little panfish size jig head that weighs about 0.6 grams and it's a great jig head and i'm going to just hang it back here where i like to hang stuff to dry and go on to the next one and what i'm going to do is i'm going to switch thread so that y'all can see this better i'm going to i'm going to be right back all right so let's do another one let's do a little bigger one this time and let's use a nail to do this one okay i've switched to a brighter uh chartreuse thread here so hopefully you can see it a little better uh i'm going to go ahead and build it with a 10 millimeter bead i'm going to put that on a number one hook a 10 millimeter can fit on a two, number two a little smaller you can go all the way up to a one out so let's just split the difference we're going to use a number one once again this is your eagle claw 570 90 degree jig hook very economical hook and then we're going to take a nice purple bead i like purple um it's a nice color for bass and of course uh, crappie like it too um, and what we do now we just run that nail right in there just like that 
same thing. We look up here, we check the length, and obviously we've got no problem with it being too long for the hook, so we don't even have to trim it. So it goes back to the same basic jig tying skills that you'd use to make the little one. You just start out, you wrap your thread all the way down, and you want to ta you know, trap this tag end under a whole bunch of wraps so it can't come out. Bring it all the way back up to the end of the jig, and there you go. And then we're going to take our little scissors. And I like these little Westoff scissors that you can get at Walmart. They only cost like a dollar, dollar twenty-five or something. They're really, really good. Uh, you, you know, because for tying jigs, you don't need the fanciest scissors in the world. And I'm always trying to keep things economical. Okay, so now we're going to stick this on here. And a 10 millimeter bead weighs about 2.5 grams. And then you throw a nail in there and you're right around 3, 3.5 grams, which is almost exactly the same as an eighth ounce. I mean, 3.5 is an eighth ounce. Okay, so it's just like the technique I showed you before. We're going to go around the jig hook, right where it turns 90 degrees, then around the nail, then around the hook, around the nail, around the hook, until we get this connection right here really built up and really secure. Okay, and then we're going to go all the way down the nail. Now, nails are really, really strong, and they uh, your jig head generally will not fail. I don't care what kind of rocky crawl you get it stuck in. Uh, you'll be able to uh, get it out without bending, generally. Now, you got to watch out when you come down to the end of a nail because a nail is beveled. Of course, it's made to go into wood or metal or whatever. Most of them, these are uh, wood nails for finishing uh, trim and so forth. And so when I get down to this point, I really got to be careful not to snap. So I'm kind of going to go light on my wraps until I get that point all covered up. Okay. And then... Um, and there you go okay so now I've got it all covered I'm just gonna finish covering up this nail with thread as best I can because that'll help waterproof it and keep it in there keep it on there okay and then I come down and do the same thing we're gonna take three fingers we take the thread now I may have come across like that and I just take that up and over and just once that's called a half hitch and people use that in the rodeo and in sailing and all kinds of stuff and we use it in Fly tying too. And then we're going to come and we're going to put a few drops of our sealant on here, of our finishing solution, onto there. And we're going to wrap that in. Okay, now we're going to do our whip finish. So we're going to go around one, two, three, four, five. Bring it down. And then we're going to do it English style. We're going to go come around once and then we're going to go one, two, three, four. And we're going to Bring that right on over, just like that. And now, that is a real tight, good knot that's not going to fail you, not going to come undone, but just to make sure, we're going to goop this whole thing to help waterproof it, to help stiffen it and increase its durability. And boy, doesn't that purple look good with that chartreuse? I think that's how I'm going to finish this tie with a little... Uh, chartreuse and some chartreuse uh, body material, maybe some metallic blue highlights in or some flash of blue highlights in there, here and there. And pull it and just break it and now you have yourself a really cool, and the great thing about electroplated heads like this purple one, is you can knock it on all the rocks you want, there's no paint to chip on here. This is electroplated on here. I mean, I haven't been able to chip one, I suppose if you ran over it with something or really used the heck out of it, uh, you might get a scratch or a chip in it, but generally the electroplate holds up beautifully in the water and you have a really nice colorful jig head uh, to go ahead and tie yourself a jig for some big old crappies. Alrighty, so that's it folks. I'm going to hang this one back here to dry. I thank you for showing up today. Uh, been a long time since I sat at the bench and it was a real pleasure to get back with everybody. Uh, have fun tying your jigs. Get yourself out. Get yourself some beads, some pins, some nails. Have some fun tying up some lead-free pig and jigs. This is Crappie Hippie saying tight lines and valentines. Peace out.
Okay. For those of you who wanted to hang around and find out more about the company, uh, what the deal is, is that I, in 2016, shortly after I made those videos, I had actually gotten started um, on the idea of forming a lead-free tackle company. And uh, I wanted to uh, make lead-free fishing more accessible to people all over the countryside, or all over this great country of ours. I found out about the lead-free fishing laws in the northeast part of the country, Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, Massachusetts, New York. They banned lead lures under a certain size, uh, in those fisheries there, but it became aware to me that oh, also in Washington uh, But it I became aware that there were a lot of people outside those areas that were starting to talk about lead free fishing And it's important that we do because fishers lose between 2,000 and 3,000 tons of lead litter Lost jig heads lost weights and so on Every fishing season and that is a very conservative estimate that's based on two things the amount of lead purchased by tackle companies uh, to make lead uh, products. Also, the uh, estimate we have about 50 million fishers in this great country of ours. Um, the average amount of time each fisher fishes is 16 trips. So if you compute losing 10 to a dozen eighth ounce jigs or four to five half ounce weights in the course of 16 trips, that's how you come up with that figure. And I, most people, when I shoot them that, they tell me, oh, no, I lose way more lead than that. You know, I, I, I've lost a dozen crappie jigs in one trip. Sure, we all have, okay? It's just something that we weren't aware of, but it's building. It's building fast. Uh, it's been, it's like 150,000 some tons of lead since these products started to be mass produced. And it's just not what our sport needs. But right now, lead is really expensive and so on. And so uh, my company is trying to get, you know, solutions like pin jigs like some of this other stuff uh to make it more affordable and also to make it more accessible anyway that's what i've been working on that's why i haven't had a video since 2016 uh in the meantime this pin jig concept is what led me to invent our first lure for glass water my company is called glass water lead free lures and the first lure that we invented is a lure called angle king check it out angle king catches them all bass I got an angle on it. Pike. The angler's angle. Walleye. Found my angle. Crappie. Just playing the angles. White bass, wipers, and stripers. If you chase predatory game fish, now you've got a new angle. The angler's angle. Angle king. All right. Cool, right? It's cool, right? It's a great lure, and it really works really well. It's the only double underspin out there with the blades consecutive like that. That gives you a lot more vibration. That gives you clack effect. Uh, it, it, it's just uh, big flash, big vibes. Uh, it has the three line ties on top, so you can change the way it runs in the water, uh, different angles, and that's why we named it Angle King. Um, anyway, that's our first lure. And I'll tell you what, if you want to try that lure out, I'm going to, because you're watching this video and stuck in and wanted to hear about the company, I'm going to give you a special. You can get three Angle Kings, $20. I'll pay for the shipping and I'll throw in 10 free tails. That's two of each. We have five colors of tails. I'll give you two of each. Okay. So you get a 10 pack of tails. You get three baits. I pay the shipping. You give me $20. And you can go out and catch yourself some fish on Angle King. How does that sound? Put in, go to glasswaterleadfreelures.com. Put in the code word crappie hippie, all one word, lowercase, crappie hippie. And that special will pop up for just for y'all for watching this video and hearing me, giving me a chance to talk to you about our company and what we're trying to do. I appreciate you hanging in there with me. Uh, stick with me. I'm going to keep putting up more videos as I can. Uh, we're getting close. I'm seeking second round funding. We're about to launch the company. Um, I'm looking forward to all the support I can get from all the great fishers out there. Uh, your support so far uh, has been just amazing to me. And I really hope we can you know, stay together and raise this uh, environmental awareness when it comes to lead-free fishing. In the meantime, keep tying, keep dreaming. Tight lines and valentines. This is Crappie Hippie saying, peace out. Thank <laughs> you.